Hello friend, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you really quickly how I color grade real footage using my LUTs. I'm going to show you this because today I'm launching my online course, my LUTs that are officially available, and my brand new website to house both the online course and the LUTs. So yeah, I figured there'd be nothing more appropriate than to show you how I color grade actual footage. This is going to be footage that's shot on the Sony a7 III, the Fuji X-T3 and X-T30, the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, and iPhone. So yeah, they are pre-picked shots. So they are some of my favorites that I have. So you're not gonna see me try and take some really awful shot and turn it into a really amazing shot using my magical LUTs because that's such a misconception about LUTs. That's not what they're here for. So I'm taking shots that I know that I exposed well and white balanced properly and maybe they just need a little finessing to really look great. So yeah, with that said, I'm gonna dive right into color grading. I've gone ahead and cleaned off any color grade that I've put on the footage and I'm starting from scratch with the footage as I shot it straight out of camera. So let's go ahead and dive in to the computer into DaVinci and start editing. So I'm already in the edit tab of DaVinci and I'm in the project that I call my LUT creation facility. This is where I import footage to make new LUTs and to practice LUTs and play with them. So I have gone ahead and cleaned off all of these clips. So there's no color grade on them and they were shot in a bunch of different ways. And I'm just gonna show you real time how I color grade. So I have gone ahead and marked my favorite LUTs here, which are my LUTs, of course, and they are from the Big Sur series that I'm releasing currently. And so I'll be using them for this demo today, and hopefully you'll like them and go buy them. But if not, then just take the tips that I teach and apply them to however you want to color grade. So we're starting out with this shot of my barber here, actually, and I'm going to close the clips tab so that I can expand my screen here a little bit and I'm going to move my node over as far as I can and it's as far as it goes. Now I'm gonna push this over if I can just so I can get a little more real estate and it's as far as that goes. So now I'm going to tell you that I don't do things technically. I know that I should be better and I, you know, I think I know most of the technicalities when it comes to color grading if you're looking for the technical information, my friend Evan Schneider, I will link his profile below. Evan Schneider does amazing color grading. He is a professional colorist in Hollywood. So he is a high-end colorist. He does everything technically perfect and I have learned a lot of what I know from him and I just don't apply the technical side. So what you're about to see is not maybe the most perfect technical color grade that you'll see. And I'm sorry if that offends you, but it gets the job done for me and I'm really happy with the way it looks. And yeah, so I'm just gonna show you that. So this shot is actually pretty well exposed and white balanced. This was actually just a test shot that he and I took together. So because it's pretty well exposed and balanced already, white balanced, I'm just gonna start with my LUT here and see what happens. And it pretty much just made it warmer and added some contrasts, uh, which, you know, my LUTs are definitely on the warmer side. I, I prefer a warmer color grade. Uh, but this shot was a really high dynamic situation between Micah in the shadow and the windows kind of being blown out there. But I just love Fuji's smooth highlight roll off. So I'm going to go ahead and jump down here to my primaries wheels in Da Vinci, and I'm going to increase my gamma. And I'm just gonna start there, and I'm already feeling really good about how this is starting to look, but I need to cool it off just a touch. So I'm gonna bring it down here, and I'm really loving the way that it's already looking. And I'm gonna to go to my gain, and I'm gonna actually roll my gain up a little bit because I've already lost all of my highlights here. So I'm just gonna roll my gain, which is 
equivalent to my highlights. I'm just gonna roll that up a bit just so I get a little bit more of a pop over here, um, basically as a hair light for Micah. So it's gonna backlight him, give a little bit of brightness to his shoulder and his hair here, create some separation from the background. And I really am starting to love this image. But one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my midtones and I'm going to lift them so that his skin pops just a little more than the rest of the shadow going on here and here. So if I reset that, you can see what that's doing to the skin tones. It's just lifting them a little bit, and I really like that. But I'm gonna go back to my primaries wheels, and let's see, I think I might cool it down just a touch more so that the whole image isn't quite as warm. But then I'm gonna go back to my midtones and I'm gonna warm up the midtones so that his skin still looks really nice and natural, even and smooth. And I'm really happy with that. So one quick way that I can take this color grade here that I've done, and actually I can take a whole node structure, option S, if I've got more nodes, I can take a whole node structure, and this is how I'll color grade an entire wedding for the most part, is I will click option one. And the reason that I do this is because this copied that whole node tree. So now I'm going to click the down arrow to skip to my next clip, and I'm gonna click command one, and it applied that node tree. But it doesn't look really good on this one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these I'm going to click Option S, which will give me a new serial node. And now I'm going to go to my Fuji LUT here, and I'm going to apply that. And right away, I'm really happy with how this looks. So there's only going to be maybe one or two tweaks that I make here, and that would be probably going to uh, actually my log wheels and my midtones, and just lifting my midtones just a bit, just to make their skin pop just a touch more, but not too much. And I'm really happy with that pretty much immediately. Everything is exactly the way I want it. I love the green, what happens here. I love the skin tones on both of their faces. It looks really good. So that's a great I'm happy with. The LUT pretty much solved this one. And that's the goal of my LUTs when it comes to specifically Fuji footage uh, is to be a pretty quick solution to just getting an immediate grade that looks better than it does straight out of camera, but it doesn't manipulate the image too much. So click the down arrow, go to my next image. And now we have a really different lighting situation here. This is my wife, Liz. So I'm going to apply my LUT here and you can see that it pretty well manages the highlights and the shadows. And again, this being a very high dynamic situation with a crazy sunset happening at Yosemite and then Liz being in the very dark shadows facing away from the light. So I'm going to turn the grade back on and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna lift the gamma just a touch, but I don't wanna lose the background. I don't wanna lose the color here. And so I'm gonna lift the gamma without blowing out the background and then I'm going to use the lift here and I'm going to lift this just a bit. And if I wanna really get technical and just pay attention, I can open uh, my waveform or my parade scopes and just see how I'm doing uh, in terms of the shadows. But I really just prefer to go visually. The technical information here is really helpful, but yeah, going visually is, just really what I prefer, it's the most helpful for me. So I'll put it back on the waveform just so we can keep it up and kind of keep an eye on what's what's happening here. But I really like this image visually. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go on to the next clip. And again, I'm just gonna start with my LUT here. And again, I'm really happy with the way it looks pretty much immediately. So I'm going to maybe just bring my gamma down a bit. Uh, because I would love to see that sky come back just a bit more and I'm okay with adding some shadows in here. So now I might even go into my log wheels and bring my highlight down just a touch more so that this isn't such a 
hot spot in the image. You can see that on my scopes here, but yeah, I'm just gonna bring that down a touch and I really like the way that that looks. That looks great. So happy with that. Move on to the next image and I actually need to go ahead and skip to, let's, let's try and find something that's different. This is out in direct sunlight. This is my LUT applied immediately and it's a little too bright and also because it was out in direct sunlight and just had some wild colors going on the saturation is maybe a little overdone though I do like my color I want to be a little more tame than how wild this is so I'm gonna bring down my gamma right away but the difficulty with this is that the gamma is not affecting the dress or really the lower half of this image because it was white rock and water. So I'm gonna have to bring my gain down just a bit, but then it kind of flattens the image out too much. So I'm gonna put my gain back up where it was, and I'm gonna go here into my log wheels, and here I'm gonna see, is it the mid-tone that needs some cooling down, or is it the highlights? And really what I'm finding is that actually the mid-tones here, when I bring them down, it really kind of tames the image a little bit. So I like when I bring those down the way that it looks. So I'm gonna leave that right there. And then I'm just gonna bring back the saturation just a touch. And I'm really happy with that. So let's go ahead and skip to some drone footage. So these are two very different light situations. They are both sunset, but they are very different in terms of the color. So this is a very green field in Kansas, and I'm just gonna start with my LUT. And that is very warm. It makes the grass look really unnatural, but I can also tell that it is just way too bright. So I'm gonna start by bringing my gamma down and we're already getting closer. That made the grass look a little more natural. And for golden hour, this already would not be very bad. I, I like the warmth, but it's a little too unnatural. So I'm gonna bring back my gamma here just a bit. And I really like that. That's a good image that I'm really happy with. Uh, if I reset the gamma, you'll see that was before just the LUT and that's after. So that is a great image and I'm just going to now command copy. So just command C or control C on a Windows computer. And then I'm going to go to my next clip and I'm just going to command V. I'm just gonna paste it. So that only pastes a single node. So if I add an extra node here, then I click command C and then I go here and I click command V it only copies one node. So yeah, using the option one, command one, or the option two, command two, you can assign the option key to different color grades. That pastes the whole node structure, whereas this, command C and V, only pastes that singular node. So now I'm gonna start again with the LUT here, and that looks pretty good right away, but I want a little bit of a more aggressive grade on this clip because it was just so beautiful out there. This sunset was unreal. So I'm just gonna start by adding contrast instead of starting with my saturation because yeah, I want to see a little bit of this shadow coming in here in the hills. So I'm going to add some contrast and I really like that. That's a great start but I don't love what it ended up doing right here. So I'm gonna to go to my log wheels and I'm gonna see if affecting the shadow will do anything there. And it does a little bit. And the midtones don't really affect that much. But I really like this, I'm happy with it. Uh, there's a little bit of a green tint and cast here. I would maybe spend a little more time trying to solve that issue. Um, that, adding a little bit of a warmer pink hue to my gamma helps quite a bit, but yeah, overall, I'm really happy with that. I think that's 
a really clean and beautiful color grade. So let's go on to another clip. Again, a very different situation here, but let's try copying and pasting this. Whoa, does not look good at all. Let's turn off the contrast and we're already off to a good start. Yeah, I really like this. This was just a little warmer in real life because we were out in the desert and so I'm maybe going to bring up my gain here and yeah that's looking good so it's maybe a little too pink but let's check here yeah why don't I reset everything just to be sure and then I'm just gonna take my gamma over to the green a little bit and add a little extra warmth and I'm really happy with that before and after that looks really good so I'll move on to the next clip now this is Sony footage so this is a few of my Sony clips here so now I'll use the Sony LUT from my Big Sur series and just double click to apply and that is already pretty great I'm really happy with that I'm gonna turn off my clips and yeah I I'm actually not even gonna to touch that I'm yeah I, I'm tempted to add a little bit more gamma um, just because I can see here that the blacks are getting a little bit crushed but I really like it so I'm not gonna play with it I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna add my Sony light here and that looks pretty good too right away but I need to uh, correct these greens just a little bit they maybe are a little too warm so I'm going to move them a little bit towards the blue and but I don't want to make them more green because it is pretty good green that's a very accurate green I really like the way that it looks but I do want it to be a bit cooler so I'm gonna move it towards magenta and blue and just play there I really like that so that's before that's after and that looks great yeah I could of course I could tweak this image forever but I'm, I'm really happy with the way that looks right away now we'll apply it to this another different lighting scenario this one was tricky because it was cloudy but the sun was coming through a little bit you can see the broken clouds here and so this one is a little wild um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the lift just a bit because I don't want the image to be so incredibly uh, contrasty I, I like the way that it looks but it's maybe a little too much so I'm going to play with the gamma here it might need just a little bit of a greener hue um, let's try that well yeah just a touch just a touch of green touch of warm so when I bring it up that direction uh, it's actually just kind of a pure green that it needs no warmth no blue no purple just just a little bit of green and that is this was Ireland so that's really accurate to the experience there so now I'm gonna move on to another clip this is me in Big Sur um, hold my XT3 and yeah so Sony LUT goes right on it's a little green so I'm gonna go uh, a little warm and a little bit on the pinker magenta side I'm also going to it's a little too dark I, I like the moody look it looks really good but I think I'm gonna bring up the gamma and the gain just a touch and I'm gonna go to my log wheels and lift my midtones just a bit and you can really see my skin tone I mean it goes wild if you push too high but bring up my skin tones just a little bit and yeah that's a really good looking image I can maybe decrease the saturation just a touch but 
I'm working on a 2017 MacBook Pro, so here's a little quirk that I actually know about my computer, is that because of the MacBook P3 display, I have to have my saturation up a little bit higher than I think I do when looking at my monitor or my computer screen. And I also have to have uh, a little bit extra warmth and pink tones. So that's just the way the P3 display works. I've tried different correction methods and everything and not had any luck. So if you've had something work that is a quick solution, then let me know because I would love to know it. So here's some iPhone footage. Um, I'm just going to apply my iPhone LUT. I love that. I'm going to bring up the gamma just a touch so there's not so much contrast. And some more iPhone footage here. And just applying the LUT looks really good. I'll maybe warm that up just a bit because this was Big Sur. This is actually Big Sur. Yes, the Big Sur LUT pack. Uh, this is where it got its name. So yeah, this was Thailand. I love this footage. This is great. I'm going to bring that down just a bit more. Um, bring down the gain just a touch. I love that. I think that's a great image iPhone footage can be so easy to color grade or it can be so hard to color grade depending on your situation but I found that my LUT really does a pretty good job and so uh, yeah this is another different lighting situation with iPhone footage so uh, and here this is this is the last thing if you ignore my advice when purchasing LUTs my LUTs specifically and really just with LUTs in general, I think LUTs are best for creative color grading rather than technical color grading. So if you shoot in log, which I don't recommend when using my LUTs, but if you choose to, then here is the workaround. We'll jump right in. I think that you should start with the technical LUT from your manufacturer, which is the X-T3, the Fuji X-T3. So this is a free LUT that they make and I'm going to apply that to my footage. And now my F log, F gamut, has turned into Eterna Rec 709. And I'm gonna add a new serial node. And so now I have my technical LUT here. And then I'm going to just add my Fuji Creative LUT on top. And there you go. That's how you bypass the issue of shooting an F log and using my LUTs is to use the manufacturer color um, for the technical F gamut or F log or S log converting to the standard Rec 709 and then using my LUT to color grade on top of that. So I hope you found this helpful. That was actually how I color grade real life footage of mine. So this is where I made my LUTs. This is how I made my LUTs. Uh, I used some footage of mine. I used some footage from friends. And I actually looked at a ton of footage. So that's a little bit of a behind the scenes. I didn't get into all of the HSL curves. I didn't get into anything else. This is a very basic form of how to color grade using my LUTs. So I hope you found this helpful. If you'd like more color grading videos in the future, let me know, leave me questions and comments below. Again, I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.